Well, thank you all for coming. I was afraid word would get out that I'm preaching and all of you would stay home. It's my misfortune to follow Rick the last two Sundays. Man, what an incredible couple of messages those were. Last week was just, that's one of the best messages I've ever heard. It's a whole lot better message than I've ever taught, I'll tell you that. It was just wonderful about God's holiness, that uh, it's remarkable and good. Uh, just a quick report. Uh, the church, uh, I meet with Leslie and Matt uh, every week, uh, and the other team members. Uh, uh, we, I, I'm so thrilled and happy and excited about what they all are doing. And uh, uh, Chris and the worship team, and it's enjoyable to be here and to be up here and to be around them and the team that we've, uh, that the Lord put together and the things they're doing. I believe the church is better uh, pastored today than it probably ever has been. And uh, for that, I'm very grateful. Our kids, our children, which is one of the primary visions of the church from the very beginning, our children are being well taken care of and taught uh, grace and the love of God. Our teenagers are the same way. And uh, we're being taught. And one of the side benefits of <laughs> retiring for me is I get to listen to Matt and Rick and the others. And they are really good. There's something every week that the Lord speaks to me about through, through them. And uh, that's all I look for in a message is something that I hadn't thought about or, or a reconfirming of something that needs to be re reconfirmed in my spirit and heart. Even though I know it, I'm not actually walking in it at the time. And the Lord ministers to me through that. And worship. Uh, worship changes me. Worship focuses me. Worship corrects me. It, I was here, and I, right off the bat, since we start, bless the Lord on my soul, that became a part of uh, a reclamation project in my, inside my brain. So it always impacts me and affects me. So this morning, I just want to take a few minutes, and it, it won't take long if y'all listen fast. And, uh, <laughs> because honestly, uh, this is which is something pretty rare for me. It's really kind of a topical uh, subject and really a lot of it is sort of unexplainable. So I'm just going to sort of do my best because I felt like the Lord prompting me to talk about this uh, today. Do you realize, are you aware, I'm sure you are, that life can be tough? Are you aware of that? <laughs> In case you aren't, I want to inform you. <laughs> Life can be tough. It's not always, but boy, there's something in every season of your life that's difficult and hard, hard to overcome, hard to correctly respond to, difficult to keep your faith up, to keep believing, to keep trusting, to overcome and all that kind of stuff. Life can be tough. Life can be hard. Often is. Uh, Jesus talked to us about that, didn't he? I want to read a passage of scripture in just a moment before we get to that. I want you to think about this. Even though life is hard, life is life. You realize that? That the, the preeminent, above all else, blessing is that you got to live. You did. Regardless of how long, regardless of the circumstances of it, God bequeathed to you the most incredible gift that exists, the gift of life. 
regardless of its difficulties and troubles. Because every life, God-given life, God-constructed life, actually, every God-given and constructed life is an eternal life. If you've ever lived, you will live forever. Right? Can you think of an exception to that? Where someone is, their, their life is, their real life is utterly extinguished and gone? No, none. All life is created to be eternal. Right? Okay. What do we say? Most of us would say life begins at what? That's not a trick question. Life begins at what? Inception. That's what I believe. Absolutely believe it. Now that has some implications if you understand that life, actually life began before the inception that actually took place that brought it about. Matter of fact, you were known before the foundation of the world. However, for us, life begins at inception. When that sperm and that egg touch, just touch, everything about that life is already there in seed form. Every bit of that life was spoken into being by God. Life begins at inception for us. Okay, what implications does that have for all the little babies that have been killed, aborted? What is, what's the implications of that for them? Every one of them has eternal life. Every one of them. And the fullness of who they are will be expressed have been expressed already in the presence of God, in union with God. Therefore, the gift of life itself is the greatest gift of all, regardless of how difficult it is, or even painful it is, how short or how long it is. It's a tremendous gift. Do you agree? Now, our individual lives were not just created, spoken into existence by God, even though there were human factors in it, obviously. But every one of those lives, including my own, was created to be unique. Unique. You were created to be unique. You are unique. There's not a, a roughly uh, 7 billion people on the planet today, not a single one of them, and you count all the billions before and maybe billions ahead. I don't know. Not a single one of them will ever have my fingerprint or your fingerprint. We're uniquely created. Everything about, there's, there are similarities, right? There are similarities in people, uh, some uh, people similar to me that be similar could be similar in physical. Uh, I don't want them to be similar physically. I mean, but <laughs> some of them are, unfortunately. But my internal makeup, the way I think, uh, the details of my emotions, the thoughts of my mind, the the makeup of me is not duplicated and never will be by anyone. Same is true of you. So God created this unique, living, eternally living person. Therefore, God can, does, and can uniquely love you. That's why I say often, God loves me more than he loves all y'all put together. <laughs> it's that uniqueness of his love, that personal aspect of his love. And God who spoke the whole universe into existence and holds it together. It's all inside of him. You understand that, right? It all operates inside of God. 
He's, he's large. He's large. All of those people, if he can do all of that, why can't he love you individually and everyone else individually as he desires? He can. He does. You remember the shack, the book? Have any of you read that? If you haven't read it, you ought to read it. It's been around a long time now. And uh, you just ought to read it. I, I read it on an airplane flying back from, I remember some tough meeting I had in Portland, Oregon, or somewhere like that, where I was teaching grace and people hollered at me. <laughs> some of them. <laughs> I left thinking, well, hey, I got them to thinking. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, flying back in the airplane, I had the book and I started reading. I read the whole thing on that flight. And I, unfortunately, was at the back of the plane, kind of over against the window when I, I get claustrophobia and I'm dying back there, you know. And anyway, I started reading this book and I quit feeling claustrophobic. In the end of it, there's a scene where Jesus comes out. It, it, it's kind of the marriage supper of the lamb or something an event like that I can't remember exactly where there are thousands and as far as you can see people and there's uh, everywhere on the hills everywhere and he's coming into the crowd way off it's so, he's so far away from me in, in my thinking that I can't even make out his features really and the way the description goes it felt so personal for me that out of those millions, seemed like people, endless people, way over there, it's like he looks directly at me, specifically to me. I can see his face now. He's looking specifically at me, and he says, and smiles and says, I'm particularly fond of you. And that could be the most dramatic moment where I understood at a deeper level his personal love for me, just me. It's easy to say he loves us, but he loves me. Therefore, the gift of life is everything. He thought enough of me to put me together like I am and love me individually. Okay, that really is all I came to say, but I'm going to say a few other things. Not much, but just a little bit. Uh, up on the screen, we got some scriptures from John, uh, John 16. And I want to read this to you. And you'll see it in context as we go through it. Verse 23. Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he says, In that day you will ask me no questions. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you shall ask the Father for anything, he will give it to you in my name. Now this is right before the cross. And he knows they are headed for some very, very difficult times personally however he's encouraging them and they in this context here all of a sudden get it as far as him being the son of God that he is God they get it they don't question it anymore he'll give you anything in my name until now you've asked for nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full these things I've spoken to you in figurative language. But now is coming when I will speak no more to you in figurative language, but will tell you plainly of the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I, will, and I do not say to you that I will request the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself, he's no longer asking the Father on your behalf, the Father himself. It's a big transition, a big change that's coming. The Father himself loves you. Isn't that good news? 
It's not me trying to convince him to love you. The Father himself loves you. Where was I? Man, he on my behalf and the himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from the Father. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. I'm leaving the world again and going to the Father. His disciple says, Lo, now you are speaking plainly and are not using a figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answers them and said, Do you now believe? Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered. Here's his, things are going to get different. Each to his own home and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. I said this to you that you may have peace. In the world you have trip, tribulation or trouble. But take courage, I've overcome the world. Okay. But Lord, I have to admit to you that the world doesn't look overcome. Does it? Does the world look overcome to you right now? Sure doesn't to me. Now, I know that's true because he said it. So it must be overcome in a way that I'm not seeing or not acknowledging. Here's how he's overcome the world. He overcame He overcame death, he overcame hell, he overcame the grave, he overcame sin, he overcame everything that the world has in it. But he also said, as long as you're here, you're not of the world, but you're in the world. And as long as you're in the world, you're going to have some trouble. But be of good cheer or be of good courage. I've overcome the world. That says to me that in in the scheme of God, in the long processes of God, in the eternal nature of God, in eternity is where the world is overcome. It's already been done. It's already happened. It's already been overcome. So that says to me that we're really okay, even if we don't feel like it, we really are. Stephen May said one time, he said, if, you are, if, you are, uh, if you're in despair, if you're in, in a place of, uh, what, hurting, despairing, all of this, worried, all of this, he says, take another look. And take a longer look, he said. He said, you may have to take a look that stretches all the way from where you are to there. But start looking. That God has a plan beyond the earth. Right? So start taking a longer look. Uh, Just a few illustrations. Lucy Bunn. Lucy, are you here today? There she is. Lucy started taking a longer look, didn't you? There's, she has been through, you know, hell on earth uh, for a while, for a good while, and despaired for a while. It's, it's, it's <laughs> she sounded to me like this. Jack Taylor told me, my mentor and friend and my dad, really, in this faith, I call him Pop. He's <laughs> he was being uh, facetious, but he said, he said, yes, son. He said, I talked to the Lord this morning, and I told him this. I said, Lord, it surprises me you've got as many friends as you do from the way you treat the ones you've got. <laughs> I said, I've felt like that before. <laughs> uh, it seems like he doesn't always know what he's doing as far as I'm concerned, even though I know he does. Lucy started looking longer. A longer look. 
And now, God, you can't shut her up. She's, she's, I told her the other day, I said, Lucy, please don't step out in, a bu- fr- in front of a bus on purpose just to go to heaven, okay? She's, <laughs> she took a longer look. In this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world, regardless of what goes on inside of it. Now, just some, some, some quick things. Uh, I wanted to talk about God's sustaining grace, how God's grace sustains us. And when I say grace, it's a big subject. I mean, it talks about it, it's all inclusive of his love, his acceptance, his kindness, his goodness, the defeat of sin, the, the fact that you're righteous. All of the things that grace entails for all of us and reveals to all of us is really what I'm talking about, his sustaining grace. Part of his his grace ministry to us is that he sustains us in difficulties. I've always thought that regardless of what we have to go through, there will be grace sufficient there to help us through it. It doesn't mean it won't be sad. It doesn't mean it won't hurt. It doesn't mean it won't be scary. It doesn't mean any of that. But his grace is there to sustain. It's available to sustain us. There's, there's three places, really, in, in my opinion, that we need to be firm in our grace faith, in, in receiving God's love and his absolute acceptance of us and all that that implies. Because trouble's coming of some sort, at some time, for each of us, all of us, go through it. And his sustaining grace helps us in this place. It helps us in our temptations. All of us are tempted, right? Jesus was tempted and never sinned. That means that being tempted is not a sin. So we all have our places of temptations regardless of who we are. I'd have to say at this season of my life, some of my greatest temptations have nothing to do with some temptations in the past. I'm tempted differently, but I'm still tempted. At this season of time in my life, I'm tempted to anger. I'm tempted to go there. I'm tempted to frustration. I'm I'm tempted to fear. I'm tempted... It's easy for me, to, it's easy, it's easy to get my focus off of the kingdom and on this world. I'm tempted to anger because of the unrelenting assault on common sense. It makes me angry. Give me 10 days and full authority, I'll fix it. (laughs) There will be some ensuing chaos, I promise you. But in the end, it's going to be better. (laughs) We're all living through a season of time that's unprecedented, really, for us. For us, it's not unprecedented historically. Matter of fact, it's not very bad considering history. Not bad at all considering history, honestly. But so many people are in fear. I get it. Everybody's so angry, fearful, divided, upset. We don't trust our leaders. Matter of fact, I don't have a whole lot of respect for most of them. But I do pray for them. Sometimes. (laughs) Now, what I pray, (laughs) I'm not going to tell you. (laughs) It's also a season of time in our lives 
where so, so many are going so, through so many things. So I'm tempted to worry. That's been a temptation most all of my life, is to worry. However, I've denied it. because That shows weakness, I thought. So I deny it and deny it to myself. But I was tempted always to worry. And, and still, still am. But I think I'm going to quit. I'm just going to quit. Quit what? I'm going to quit worrying. I, I think that's the way to overcome it. Just say, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm not going to worry. I, I, I'm going to be anxious for nothing. Nothing. So you just try to make me worry anymore, and I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I'm going to let my request or my desires or my fears or whatever known to God and God, the God of peace is going to guard my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. That's sustaining grace. When I decide to stop, he comes, reassures, helps me. I can't hear him when I'm worried. Can when I'm not. So I'm going to stop worrying. That's some of my temptations. I don't know what yours are. But we're all tempted. There are common temptations to all humanity. It may be more specific for you in your area of struggle. But we all are tempted. Then it helps us, sustain, sustaining grace helps us when we're tired. Are you tired? I mean, some of you look tired. <laughs> I'm not so much tired, I'm just tired of it, I think. I'm tired of lots of things. All, all, all God's sustaining grace, ha all that it's provided for in that part of your life is to call you to rest. I fear that some of you, Paul said, stop short of entering his rest. I, I, that goes off in my mind probably once a day to enter his rest. And it has to be him. It has to be supernatural because it doesn't, it doesn't look like that inside of me. That's what I'm saying. This, it, it isn't of me to come to rest. Matter of fact, I... I don't know how to rest, it seems like. I, but inside, I can. I can come to rest. And it's all of God. I mean, this is part of His grace, not my own. It's common for all of us. That, that help, sustaining grace, it is there when I'm tired. It's a kind of a rejuvenating, an energizing sense as you receive again the promise of God that he's got you and he's got this. It energizes me when I get to that place. Uh, but it's not me, it's him. I remember when Star Wars first came out, was that 30 years ago? More, more, 40, I don't know, a long time. But anyway, I love the, especially the first one. And I'll never forget the great words of uh, the, the, uh, the great theologian, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's mentoring Luke Skywalker. And he says to Luke, he says, the answers are within you, Luke. Look inside yourself. That sounds so wise. I think, yeah, right. I, I looked inside myself and scared myself to death. But I realize that there's just, it's not in me, it's in him. I know he's in me, but I'm not looking at him, I'm looking at me. And me is this, and in him, I'm this. Totally different. So it's all of him. 
you look to him. I heard somebody say one time that the will of God will never lead you to a place where the grace of God doesn't sustain you. So his sustaining grace is there. It's personal. So it helps me stand. It helps me stand when I'm tempted. It helps me stand when I'm tired. It helps me stand when I'm troubled. When I'm troubled. And frankly, I'm troubled right now. I'm troubled. I'm troubled at the things people are going through. I'm, I'm troubled about our world. I'm troubled about our nation. I'm troubled at times about my grandkids and the world they grow up in and so forth and so on. There's trouble in my mind. But I know God is going to do something. I know he is. That he's about some things that we just don't see yet. I think the church is being scattered. I don't mean, I mean kind of dispersed. We get together but we're dispersed. That our voices, our faith, our insistence on the fact that God loves you and cares about you and is not angry with you and all that kind of stuff begins to take root in those around us. So in that way, the world is being changed. That to me, Christ stands out in the midst of chaos, that he's an anchor, a light that shines brightest in the darkness. And the darker things get, the brighter the church will shine and individuals will shine. He sustains us when we're troubled. I want to read you something. This was written by Kathy Williams, Sean's wife that plays the thing over there. You get, <laughs> plays bass sometimes, plays electric guitar sometimes. <laughs> plays everything. He can play anything. Uh, I don't mind sharing this. Kathy didn't give me permission, but she put it on Facebook, so <laughs> hey. If she didn't want it read, she shouldn't have put it on there. But it is worthy to be read and heard by everyone, not only here, but everywhere else. And she says this really from a place in her own life that could be very, very troubling and challenging. I know that much. And really this says Kathy Williams is feeling blessed. She said, I choose to live in a state of fearlessness. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what the future holds, and I refuse to live in fear and worry. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So instead, I choose to expect the best and accept the rest. You just can't imagine how that spoke to me when I read it. Instead, I chose to expect the best and accept the rest. I choose to live life in the present and be at peace with all things that are out of my control. That also speaks to me. The Lord's been speaking to me about that. Stop trying to control. You're not in control. I'm in control. They think they're in control, but they're not in control. I'm in control. Okay. I can handle anything that comes my way because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I will be like the waves, just rolling with it. Maybe someone else needs to hear this today. You are going to be okay. Now this wonderful line at the very end. I mean, it just 
She said, because life isn't perfect, but it is a good life. And that's my point today. Life itself is the greatest blessing of all because it's eternal. Okay, I'm done. Would you stand up and I'll pray for you. <laughs> Folks, these kind of messages aren't necessarily my bailiwick. I always get nervous when the Lord says, wants me to talk about something that I don't know much about. <laughs> I just wanted to share some of my own struggles and believe that God is doing something that we can't see bigger than us and his grace sustains us through everything so take your eyes from here put them there begin to worship begin to receive again over every day God's magnificent wonderful kind love for you and rest in the fact that it's all in his hands He's got a plan, and he's doing something. Lord, I pray that we'll all be able to receive encouragement. And the grace, Lord, to focus where we need to focus. That we're not of this world. We're not a, we're a citizen of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. We're part of the kingdom. A kingdom that has no end. So by faith, Lord, I just speak life, I speak peace, I speak rest, I speak joy. Lord, what a magnificent thing it'd be for all of us in the midst of difficulties find a place to laugh and enjoy what life we have. Lord, we just want to declare our, own, our love for you, our praise to you, our worship to you. We glorify you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. I pray you'll lift spirits. I pray that we'll all as we leave, Lord, that something fundamentally has changed way we thought when we came. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Love you all. God bless.